Hello, my name is Pauline RN. Welcome to my channel. Today we are doing exam two developmental theory, health and wellness, critical thinking. This video is already out there. I'm doing the question and answers to this video. This is part two. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. My first question is, for your abdominal assessments, what are your sequence? The correct answer in four quadrants. First, we inspect. Second, auscultate. Third, percussion. And last, we palpate. Next question, directly from RN exams. Patient is short of breath, difficulty breathing. What is the correct position for this patient to be in? And the answer is the orthropnic position. Orthropnic position. Patient is on Lasix. What will be your assessment? The correct answer, we will assess the patient's potassium level levels. We will check our daily lab reports to monitor the patient's potassium levels. Lasix is a water pill. The patient keeps going to the bathroom. The patient keeps voiding urine. So their potassium levels sometimes are low because they keep peeing out the potassium. So we have to monitor their daily labs. We're checking their potassium levels. Please note, Lasix are given orally and IV. Patients take Lasix at home orally, and we administer oral and IV Lasix in the hospitals. Next question, patient is complaining of pain, in swelling, pain, swelling in calf. Calf is warm to touch, calf is tender. What do you do first? The correct answer, you notify the doctor that this patient of, is having signs and symptoms of DVT, deep vein thrombosis, thrombophlebitis, warmth, pain, swelling to touch, tenderness of the calf. What are the rights of your patient? In regards to medication administration, the correct answer, the patient has the right to refuse as stated in the Bill of Rights. My next question, when is the best time to collect a sputum specimen from your patients? The correct answer is first thing in the mornings. Your patient has a horrible cough he or she sleeps all throughout the night. And when he wakes up in the morning, all that googly stuff starts coming up. You grab the first sputum of the morning. That's the one we will send to the lab. Next question. When you administer, when you are administering a I am injection in the deltoid on the arm, deltoid. How many milliliters should you administer in one deltoid? What's the most in milliliters can you administer? And the correct answer is one milliliter. If the doctor orders two milliliters, then you would have to administer one milliliter in one deltoid and the second milliliter in the other deltoid. You should not administer two milliliters in one arm. The patient will start complaining of severe pain and distress in the arm. So the correct answer is one milliliter. When you are administering a sub-Q injection, for example, heparin, what gauge you, needle should you use? 
and the correct answer for sub Q injection is 25 and 5 8 and this is for example your heparin injection and a subcutaneous injection next question what will be your communication for the developmental level of children? The correct answer is explain in simple words is the correct answer for communicating with children. Next question. When you're giving a patient, when, an, when a doctor has ordered cream and ointments for your patients, who administers this patient? Your tech just gave your patient a bed bath. The correct answer is not the techs to administer cream and lotions after bed bath. It's a prescription that must be administered by the registered nurse only. Next question. Psychosocial development occurs how is the question. And the correct answer is in the various stages of human life that are environmental developed by Eric Erickson stages of development so I repeat this question psychosocial development occurs how the correct answer is in various stages of human life that are environmental is developed by Eric Erickson stages of development. My next question is physiological development. What is physiological development? The correct answer size, function of a person associated with genetic influences. It is nutrition. So physiological development is size and fu function of a person, is associated with genetic influences, is associated with nutrition. These are all physiological development. Next question, what is cognitive development? And the correct answer is how we learn. Elderly at risk for what? Elderly are at risk for, and the correct answer is osteoporosis and falls. Next question, if your elderly patient is confused, what do you do? The correct answer is notify your doctor. Your doctor will give you an order. This is new confusion. It's not that the patient was sometimes they're admitted with confusion. But if you have a patient who was oriented yes to the times for an elderly person and today the person is confused oriented times one, this is new. You notify the doctor and your doctor will give you an order for a urinalysis and we are looking for signs and symptoms of urinary tract infection. What do you know about cutting the fingernails and toenails of a diabetic patient? The correct answers, we healthcare workers do not cut fingernails or toenails of diabetics if you cut the toenails and fingernails and the skin gets cut 
that is risk for infection entering the skin and causing bloodstream infection. So for diabetic patients, the family said, please cut my mom, please trim my mommy's fingernails and toenails. Let the family know they should get a referral to a podiatrist. A podiatrist is the only one who cuts fingernails and toenails. What do you know about changing the gown of a stroke patient? If you have a patient who has stroke, you'll put the gown on the affected side, the stroke side first. Then the good side is last. If you have a stroke patient, putting on the pants of a male patient, put the leg of the pants on, the affected leg first, the stroke leg first, then the good leg is always last. <clears throat> is pain subjective or objective? The correct answer, pain is always subjective. Pain is what the patient says it is, not what the family says it is. Sometimes you have a patient who is newly admission and mommy may be confused and mommy been living with her daughter for quite a while. She can figure out the mannerism of her mom. Then you can ask the doc, the 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 family member, if mom is not oriented times three, um, just for anything that's not normal, you can communicate to the family, but pain is what the patient says it is. It's subjective. We can look for facial grimaces if the patients are not able to speak. Eric Erickson stages of development, zero to 18 years old. What stage is that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Eric Erickson stage of development, older than 65 years old, 65 or older, the correct answer is integrity versus despair for adults 65 years old or older. What is universal precautions is your next question. And the answer is gloves, goggles, face shields, and your gowns. Next question, what do you know about delegation of education? The nurse is the only one who delegates, edu who does education. The nurse, the RN is the only one who educates the clients. If you're working with an LPN, Throughout the admission, the LPN can do a little minimal education, but on a test question and in the real life, the answer is the registered nurse. The LPN is never responsible for education. The LPN can say a few things to the patient, but the RN reinforces it. And on the day of discharge, the RN makes sure the patients and family is educated. So the next question is, who does the IVs in the hospitals, the nurses or the LPN? If we have a LPN, maybe some states, 
have LPNs. Maybe some states do not have LPNs working with the nurse. But if there's an LPN and an RN, the nurses are the only ones who do IVs, not the LPN. Education, RN is responsible. IVs, RNs are responsible. RNs are responsible for IV fluids, antibiotics, fluids for parental nutrition which is liquid the nurse does anything that's gonna be infused through the veins of a patient when we talk about delegating work to a new nurse or maybe an agency nurse coming into the hospital for the first time, or maybe an agency nurse who is not really familiar with her, her floor. What do we know about this? And the correct answer for new nurses coming on the floor, on familiar nurses to the floor, the correct answer is do not delegate fresh post-op patients to a new nurse. We'll delegate fresh post-op patients to nurses who are experienced, to nurses who are familiar with their environment. And I'll ask you to give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe, please share this video. This was part two. Please stay tuned to part three. Have a blessed day. Thank you.